Like so much in nature, I too am slow to rise in the autumn. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the show. This is episode number 197 of the All Around Growth Podcast. My name is Rob Kaiser, and I am your host. Welcome back to another show of a podcast that is intended to provide insight and tools to building the lives and homesteads of our dreams. Today is Monday. We're back at another, we're back into another work week. And to get things started off, I figured we might as well read from The Rudder of the Day, a book by Dan Miller, author of 48 Days to the Work You Love. And on page 178, we read, less sleep, more work. Maybe not. Sufficient rest may be a prerequisite to productivity. If you're like many serious career climbers today, you've relegated sleep to the bottom of your priority list, convincing yourself you can burn the midnight oil on your way to success instead. We are in a culture that equates time with accomplishment. Thus, we feel the constant pressure to work longer hours. The badge of honor is to be too busy. As we share how things are going, being busy beyond reason is a sure sign of success. Or is it? One of the clear byproducts of this new economy where technology allows us 24-7 access to our workstations and instant information has been an almost total disregard for sleep, family, and personal balance. I think I misread something there. Let's try that again. One of the clear byproducts of this new economy where technology allows us 24-7 access to our... Apparently not. The brightest and best appear to pride themselves on extreme commitment to work ignoring relationships and focusing on the business bottom line only. I grew up on a farm, and in retrospect, I see how successful my father really was. Yes, he worked hard, balancing the roles of both farmer and pastor. The pastorate paid nothing, so the farm was our source of income, and yet the duties of the pastorate always had equal priority. But the farming also forced a cycle of work and rest, and that there were a few weeks of really hard work, Then the season ended or the rains came for a few days. Nothing could be done to alter these inevitable events of nature. I am convinced that God orchestrated the required periods of labor and restoration. And even with plenty of work to be done and with perfect weather conditions, Dad still recognized the power of, quote, keeping the Sabbath holy, close quote. Is giving up sleep the secret of success? Not according to James B. Moss, author of Power Sleep. Quote, There is a way to condition yourself to get less sleep, but not to need less sleep, he contends. You're simply becoming habituated to a low level of alertness. Moss believes that if you get eight hours of sleep, you will be able to get your 19 hours of work done in 12 efficient hours. Worried about missing success? Albert Einstein slept 10 hours a night. Quote, There is more to life than increasing its speed. Close quote. Mohandas Gandhi. My recommendation, expect and make deposits for all success, or for success in all areas of life, including physical, spiritual, and personal development. True desirable success does not come from 168 hours a week devoted to work. Find your level of needed sleep, go to bed at a reasonable time, and wake up when you are well rested. And before we read a couple questions for today, we'll take a look at something from the Bible. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I lack. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me behind quiet waters. He renews my life. He leads me along the right paths for his name's sake. That's from Psalm 23, verses 1 through 3. This is a great way to start the week. I initially felt a little down on myself this morning because... I slept in. That's why I began, well, I don't want to say I felt down, a little down on myself. 
I did not set an alarm this morning. And accordingly, I slept until I felt rested. That put me at approximately 6.30, 6.20 a.m. this morning. And going about the normal routine that I do in the morning has me leaving a little earlier than expected. It's, as I speak these words, it's 7.42 a.m. Now, technically, the business does not open <clears throat> until 8 o'clock. But we have customers coming in at 7.30 because very little at the day job is consistent including how we communicate our business hours to our customers. And that's okay because I'm not really involved in sales directly. So I have a little bit more flexibility with my schedule. I also have a little bit more flexibility with the way in which I manage my stress. So this idea of My, the, the, this idea of everyone needing to be there at 7.30 just simply isn't valid. Generally speaking, though, I am there uh, on time most of the time. But because I'm trying to follow a cyclical pattern, a pattern that involves a return to nature and I'm trying to incorporate more of those natural patterns in my life, in the fall, I simply find myself sleeping a little bit more. Am I catching up from sleep in the summertime? Because I still don't have blackout curtains and quite frankly, I just don't sleep as well during the summertime due to all of the activity, whereas in the wintertime I am generally sleeping considerably more. And I presume many animals, especially mammals in nature, follow a, uh, follow a similar path. However, Sufficient rest may be a prerequisite to productivity, and in my case, it most certainly is. It's not a prerequisite to productivity, but it's a prerequisite to my functioning well as a human. As many of you know, I have seizures. I have epilepsy and I've been dealing with this for 30 years. I still don't have any rhyme or reason or understanding as to why I, why, what, dare I say afflicted with this, but it is my reality. And I could come up with all sorts of manners of explanation as to why, but that's just Rob waxing philosophical on things that are a little bit off subject. The root cause is we don't know. Doctors don't know. I certainly don't know. So we're at a point where all I am able to do is take steps towards mitigating or eliminating contributing factors to the symptoms that I deal with. 
And for me, that involves sleep, and that also involves effective management of my stress. Now, how does today and this reading about less sleep, more work, maybe not, factor into my life and everything else that's going on? Well, I've hinted at some of that already, and as previously mentioned in the past few episodes, functional nutrition is high on my radar. And there are four pillars of health that the functional medicine people have communicated to me. One is nutrition, one is movement, one is sleep, and one is stress. And the two of the four pillars of health that the people at Functional Medicine pride themselves on focusing on are nutrition and sleep. I'm sorry, nutrition and stress. Movement and sleep are up to me. But nutrition and stress is where I will be receiving some simple guidance from or on. Sleep is on me. Are you sleeping enough? I'd like to think that I am, but the reality is I could probably be sleeping more and I could also improve the quality of my sleep. I pause because I find myself just in thought the way that I often find myself in thought, but stuck a little bit because I'm not really sure how to articulate all of this. The podcast has been a way for me to discuss and try to harness some of the things that are on my mind lately. And as we are approaching a year of the show being what it is now, I find myself reflecting on that and wondering what what's next. I don't know. I went from feeling somewhat positive to kick off the work week to going down some sort of a mental thought train that isn't really the optimal place to be on the last leg of your morning commute as you are trying to wrap up the podcast. But alas, sometimes this is how it is. At any rate, We're winding down the show for today. We're winding down episode number 197. And we're about to kick off another work week. If you find yourself 
liking what you hear, <laughs> this episode may be an exception. But in general, if you find yourself liking what you hear, I would encourage you to share whatever episodes strike your fancy on social media, share them with a loved one. There are links in the show notes referencing all episodes, easy to share on Facebook, Twitter, or other social media sites as well. And that's it, guys. I will also have links to Dan Miller's book, Rudder of the Day, in the show notes as well. And that's about it. I have some information on the 48 Days Eagles community, one of whose members recently joined the All Around Growth community. I'd like to give a shout out to Wayne. Welcome to the group, Wayne. Glad that you are on board and glad that you have followed suit with some of your own thought captures. So look forward to getting to know you a little bit more and look forward to seeing if I can get something on the schedule this week for a group chat with someone. We've had some dialogue back and forth recently about what days work best and I still have yet to make any kind of decision on what we're going to do, when, where, and how, but there seems to be some interest in having a group chat, maybe like a Zoom call where we can see each other's faces, interact with one another in ways, more ways than we already do. And uh, that was a great suggestion by Chad. So thanks for that, Chad. Thanks for being a part of the audience, everyone. Thanks for being who you are, the way that you are with each and every one of us. This is Rob Kaiser, and thank you.